Street Ende? Ende. 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 Um, uh, from where group the Map Bender team talk to us about Map Bender 3? Hello all, all of you, welcome to my presentation. You will hear more about web mapping now, another <coughs> presentation on this subject. And I want to show you how you can use Map Bender 3 and you can use it to create your own GeoPortal web application and build up a service repository with it. So who, who am I and what, when, what am I doing? I'm from Germany, from Bonn, from Oh, I'm, uh, I'm part of the MapBender team since a long time now. MapBender is quite old, I'm more than 10 years old, and I'm in the team since such a long time now. I work in Bonn at the Ware Group. It's a company with 20 um, employees, and we, we are the most, um, yeah, we are working on MapBender with a big team, and we do most of the development and investment in MapBender, and we have a quite big user group and uh, users uh, in Germany who use MapBender, but this project is used worldwide and yes, it's quite popular. I'm active in the German local chapter as well, Foskis EV, and we do a lot of presentations of MapBender and other OSGU software on conferences and fairs. And I'm involved in OSGU Live and try to bring MapBender and all the other software on it. So let's have a look at, ma at MapBender and what makes it's special, and what is the focus of MapBender? So it helps you to create a WebGIS. It's a client suite that helps you to administrate a web interface. So you can build up a lot of, it has an administration web interface, and you can build up new applications with MapBender. And um, one feature of MapBender is that you uh, can create geo portals without writing a single line of code. There are a lot of people who are not used into coding, but still they can set up MapBender and create their own applications, very individual, video, and a lot of applications and um, administrate them. You can create, if you are handling a lot of OWFS services, you can create and maintain a repository and handle all of your services with MapBender and get them structured. And you can distribute configured services to your applications. So you don't have to use a service like it is published, like in a WMS with 100 layers. You can configure it and maybe only publish two layers in your application. So you can do that through the web uh, backend. And then you have users and groups, and you create them in MapBender and the backend, and then give them access to applications and functionalities and services. Just have a close look on the MapBender development. We now changed from developing MapBender 2 to MapBender 3. And um, we had a long discussion about reinventing MapBender and building it up from scratch and doing a really new application, bringing up a new application. Um, but we want to keep all the goals that we had on MapBender 2 and um, port them or um, recreate them with MapBender 3. So we still do MapBender 2 development and support, but parallel we create MapBender 3 and we have solutions already running. So if I look in the audience, is there s someone using MapBender from you? Or is it you for you? Who is using MapBender? Not so many? Okay, so it's <laughs> plenty. Okay, so we just heard what are the goals of MapBender? So if you are like a city or a commune and you have a lot of services and a lot of different users with different focus and different theme topics that they have to handle, then you can bring these components together. You can bring uh, build up several applications with a few mouse clicks. You can handle your services in a repository and then you can set up roles groups and users and assign the users to the groups and give them access to the applications you build up. So let's have a closer look in on these three components. We will start with the applications. So as you heard, you can set up one or many applications as you like. And um, this depends on your need. Maybe you only need one CD portal, then that may be enough. But maybe you want to create portals that have um, 
they only have access to some people, so you can set up an application which only some users can access and they have maybe editing functionalities which should not be used from other users. Then you have services. At the moment, or we focus on OWS, uh, OWS services and the main focus is on WMS services, um, but we will support WFS as well or WMTS and more um, data sources and um, we focus on the data sources that are available from open layers because we use open layers in Mapbanda 3 and so we will mo more and more support data sources which are possible to use with open layers. So let's have a look at the applications. This is a standard Map and the Three application that you get when you do the installation. So you see, um, we integrated map, uh, open layers as a map um, component, and um, we built a lot of elements that you can see here in this application. Like you have a navigation toolbar, and you have an overview map that you can integrate, and you can do it all in the back end with a few clicks. You can build up your own application like you want to have it. Um, let's see. You can select the scale in the application. You can do it on with the navigation toolbar as well, but you can select it here as well. You can change the projection. You have a layer tree. We have lots of buttons that you can use in your application and you can open a layer tree like this where you have all the services integrated and you can drag and drop the services or uh, delete uh, layers that you don't want in your application. In the layer tree you can disable layers or get information from the layers if they are provided. <coughs> you also can integrate the layer tree in a sidebar like it's shown here. You could integrate the legend here as well and um, you can build up your own template and use your colors or the style you want to use to set it up. You can integrate legend elements and you have a WMS loader where you can enable the, the user who is using the application to load additional WMS to the application. They will show up in the layer tree and they can drag and drop it or disable it or handle the integrated WMS. You have a measure component. You can measure the distance or you also can measure an area and get the volume. You have a print client where you can provide different print templates. You um, can provide different quality, you can provide different scales and you have the possibility to rotate the map for the print and then export a PDF file. This is all configurable so you can provide your own print templates with open Libre um, document which you export to PDF and all the templates that you configure here you can define how many you want and which size you want to support or which resolution you want to support. So how do you set up the application that's more interesting now? How does it work? First you have to log in. When you install MapBender 3 you have to define a administration and a user. Um, so there's one user already there when you set this fun fun um, client suite up and you can log in with this user. And as you can see here you also have the, fun the possibility to provide a register link if you want to set up a portal where other people can register and then create their own applications you will activate this or you can provide the forgot password functionality as well. But normally you don't, maybe you don't want other people just to register and do their own stuff. After login, you have this um, view where you can see that you have a lot of applications here in the middle. You have the functionality to <coughs> view an application or to copy an application. You can edit an application. With the eye, you can publish an application and with the cross, you can delete it. At every module, you find this filter functionality. So if you have lots of applications, you can filter them and then find easier 
the application or later the user or group that you want. At the le left side you see the tree where you can now choose um, maybe to create a new application. A new application is made of a title, an URL, URL title and a description and after you created that you can choose from different templates. We provide different templates. S um, they are different because they set up MapBender with um, different areas. In this application you see, uh, in this template you see a toolbar which will be at the top, a sidebar which we saw before where the layer tree can be in, then we have the content where the map is in and the footer where maybe the scale selector is in. So you have all these areas in MapBender 3 where you now can add elements to. Oh, I should. You have this plus button at every region and then you add elements like in this case, I want to have a map. Maybe that's the mo first most important thing I want to add. So for every element, you have a configuration, basic configuration, where you have to define which layer set maybe you want to use, which projection, <coughs> which start extent you want to use, and maybe which scales you want to support. After you define, in this case, a map element, this is the first application you, you created. And like we saw before, your application can integrate more and more elements and you can set up your individual application <coughs> like you want. <coughs> so this was about the application part and now let's have a look at the services. Our concept is that you have a tool where you can have a repository for your services. So you will add one service like a WMS one time to MapBender and then you um, move it to your applications and still have the overview on the servers and always can update it from, from the administration and um, get an overview on what services you um, handle in your geo portal. You config can configure the service and you define control access um, for the service in the application. So how does it work? You know the service URL and you publish it, you can uh, access um, services with username and password and load them into MapBender. <coughs> so after you added the service to MapBender, MapBender knows everything about the service from a get capabilities document and you will get all the information about the service from your MapBender application and you can have a look at the metadata, at the contact infos, or at the layer information. Then you will add the service to applications, and here you can now uh, make changes. Like you could say, okay, maybe topography or the border, this, these are layers that I'm not interested in, then you can disable them, or you can change um, the position of the layers by drag and drop, or you can change the format. Or the opacity. Now let's have a look at the roles. So a lot of our MapBender solutions, there are customers who have a lot of users, like in a city, they have a lot of users with different needs. And um, you can provide um, a user for, for every user in your city um, administration. And then you add a username and password and email, or maybe a special uh, profile that is um, the Inspire profile that we use here. And then you can add such a user to um, an application. We see here, we, I have this demo application that I created um, earlier. And this user, Astrid Emde, now gets view access and edit access to this application. So it depends on how much you want to give to the user. Um, you can click on the buttons and assign access to um, different um, rights. And this example shows how a user gets access to a, an application, but you can define groups as well, then assign users to groups and give the right to the group. If you have to handle lots of users, that's much more easy. Okay, that was the information about the back end. So if you're not into programming and 
you're fine with clicking and building up roles and applications and service repositories. The backend of Mapbender 3 is very good for that. And um, now I want to show you some solution that we build up with Mapbender 3. The one, uh, the screenshots you saw before, they are where the standard Mapbender 3 screenshots that you get from a normal Mapbender 3 installation. And now here we can see the GeoPortal um, GeoPortal DE, the portal from Germany. We build it up with Mapbender. Usually you would go there to the GeoPortal and make a search. You will look for some information that you are interested in and then you can add them to the standard map and get them here at the side. You can drop, drag and drop them and disable them or you can choose a different background. This is a block there. Get legend information and the things that we saw in the other application as well. You can set transparency for a layer or you can zoom for a layer. Maybe you added a layer that you can't see at the beginning so you can zoom to the layer or get the legend or KML export from the um, layer tree. We have another solution which is um, a solution when you want to go cycling and you want to find out a route that you might take, you can make a search here or define the route that you want to take and you get a profile and can export it in different formats. And one thing you can see here is that you have individual configuration that you can make and you set up your own style on MapBender application and can MapBender can look very individual. This is another geo portal that is run in, in Lippe, in the Kreis Lippe in Germany. And here you see uh, that you can get detailed information. If you have lots of topics in your application, you get um, several tabs with, with the information about the things you, you choose. Then here's Wind Atlas Rheinland-Pfalz. It's a very new application where you get information about um, I didn't look up wind, uh, wind wheels. I don't know wind wind wheel? windmills. windmills. Okay, sorry, I wanted to look up the word. I forgot. <laughs> and um, yes, so let's have a look at the components that we use in Mapbender three. Um, we use Symfony, a PHP framework, as a, the basis, or we build on that. And that is, uh, was a good solution for us because with MapBender 2, we did everything on our own. We did the map components, user handling, and everything on our own. But now with Symfony 2, we um, can use lots of components which are integrated in this framework and um, use a lot of functionality which is already provided from Symfony, like Doctrine, which is a database um, abstraction. Um, Tool, so we can provide lots of databases from this and didn't have, don't have so much um, work to implement that. So we, we use the bundle philosophy from Symfony 2 as well. As a map component, we use open layers and we communicate with open layers if it is possible with map query, which is a, a wrapper between um, application and open layers. We use jQuery and as I already said, you can set up MapBender with different databases. So what are the next steps for MapBender 3? We do regular releases. We try to do like three releases a year. And we have a roadmap where we define our milestones. And the next steps will be to provide more data sources. We want to go for WFS as a data source. We want to provide service update. We want to uh, provide, or we, we are already working on an SQL WFS digitalization tool, so you can edit data with MapBender 3. And we, um, we saw already maybe in GeoPortal Germany, there was a s search uh, plugin that we, we added to the application. We do a Lucene search and we have solutions with SQL and WFS search, but they are not integrated in the project yet, and we want to bring this to the open source code as well. 
We um, nearly finished uh, WMC editor and loader, which will be in the next version, and we will work on a mobile solution. So if you want to get to know more about MapBender, you can visit our MapBender3.org website to get more information. You will find a documentation at doc.mapbender3.org where you find information about installation and about the elements that you saw and that you can use in MapBender. You have a MapBender 3D demo that you can use. You have to register and then you can try out to configure your own application. And you have MapBender 3 on OSGO Live, so you could test it on OSGO Live. But it's not the up-to-date version, it's one version earlier. So installation is quite easy. You can download the package or you can uh, install it from a Git repository that you um, download and you find information in the docu documentation <coughs> about that as well. For more information, you can visit these sites. And that's all about MapBender. Thank you for joining the presentation. And if you have questions, you can ask them now. Okay, the question was whether I can compare with GeoServer. So maybe you know um, GeoServer had an as has an administration backend as well to, um, to provide authorized access to applications. And it has a front end where you can uh, export an open layers application maybe. So we want, uh, with MapBender 3, we are um, independent from WMS service providers, so you can integrate WMS from Map Server, QGIS Server, or Geo Server. That doesn't matter. Um, you could do it in Geo Server as well. You can uh, import external WMS there as well. But um, we focus on this Geo, geo Portal um, setting up Geo Portal functionality, which is not, yeah connected to service providers, but um, maybe it's similar how authentication works in GeoServer. Mm, that's okay. <laughs> Got a thumbs up, so you must have answered. Okay. Another question? Can you do a simple use case scenario for us? Like, for example, I am a city planter, planner, mm -hmm. and I want to calculate, find all the vacant lots in a neighborhood. Ah, okay. Yes. Dashboard. Uh -huh. mm. So I think. Okay. Um, I will start. I was the question was whether I can um, show a scenario how um, maybe you could make simple analysis. Yeah. At the moment, MapBender is only um, a viewer for WMS, or maybe you could use editing or search functionality, but uh, we don't have this classification functionality integrated yet. Uh, we had it in MapBender 2, and maybe that's at the moment the process is that we have to um, re-implement functionality that we ha had before uh, in MapBender 2 to um, get it provided in MapBender 3 as well. Um, because in the earlier uh, MapBender version, you could like um, do a search uh, in a yeah special frame where you can define your query, like give me the houses, blah blah, and then um, the result um, you would only see the the results in the in the map because the WMS server got the filter added to the get map request, but we we did not provide that yet. And maybe we will provide it when we integrate WFS. It's much easier to define the query then and add it to the service if you use WFS. But yeah, maybe we are in at the moment at that point that we want to 
bring all the basic functionality to MapBender 3 and uh, we focus on the things that our customers, which were using MapBender 2 before, that they are satisfied and get the basic functionalities. But that will be a topic that we will definitely go for as well. Yes? I have a question. So, uh, trying to compare this map vendor with Mapbridge, mm -hmm. how easy would it be to uh, extend an application? So, create an application with map vendor and then extend it the same with some apps, which is a more rich web application. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay. So the question was, how can you extend, or if you compare it with Map Mapfish, how easy it is to extend MapBender? Not MapBender, but an application created by MapBender. Yes, to extend it. Ah. Mm, okay. I, I think. We, we um, concentrate on Symfony and we have, have this bundle philosophy. So now when we um, extend a map and application with more, more functionality, we um, use the Symfony bundle philosophy as well. So you would implement it as a Symfony bundle and add it to your application. But I don't know how simple it is to do it somehow else. But Sorry, maybe I'm not too much into development. But should be possible. I think so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think we'll probably have to draw that to a close. Yeah. Uh, so once again, let's thank uh, Hastrin.